You know what? It has been a while since we did something a bit dumb on the channel and I think we should remedy that today because I have a question that I'm pretty sure nobody's asked and if we're honest nobody probably cares the answer to because it's well dumb but I I want to know what is the minimum amount of equipment you need to make a functional PC and the idea for this came from me thinking about what I need to do to upgrade my current PC when that time comes and we've all been there I've been there more times than not you have a budget in mind you go to PC Part Picker, you go to the GPU section, first and foremost, pick the best one possible, done. Then you go to the CPU section, you pick, you know, what, what's the best gaming CPU you can get to make sure you don't bottleneck your GPU. You pick that one. Oh no! And you still need a case to put it all in. You need a motherboard, you need RAM, you need a power supply. If you don't have a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, you need that. And then before you know it, you end up downgrading everything and get a PC that will function, but it's not really what you wanted. So that got me thinking, what is, what is the minimum amount of equipment you need to make a functional PC? Today's video is sponsored by World of Tanks. So you probably know what World of Tanks is. If not, do I have a surprise for you. World of Tanks is a free to play online multiplayer game with a massive arsenal of tanks to choose from, all with different strengths and weaknesses you can use to vanquish your enemies. The maps in World of Tanks are massive, covering every single biome you can imagine, plus urban city streets. World of Tanks packs tons of historical accuracy and inspiration into its playable tanks, including authentic models and vehicle characteristics. As you play, gain experience, upgrade and modify your tanks to your liking. So if that's caught your attention, make sure to head down to the description below and download World of Tanks. Also, make sure to use my code COMBAT to get 7 days premium access, 250,000 credits, and the premium tank Chrome Wall B, along with 3 rental tanks good for 10 battles each. If you're a returning player who hasn't played in 30 days or more, I got good news. There's stuff for you too. Using the code COMBAT will bag you 3 days of premium access, the bargain camouflage, and 7 days rental of the premium tank Centurion or 100,000 credits if you already have that tank in your garage. So new or old, using the code COMBAT will get you some free goodies. So head down to the description below and check out World of Tanks today. And thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring today's video. And I'm not talking like a gaming PC, <laughs> obviously. I want something that can, well, get into Windows, one. Um, browse YouTube, watch YouTube videos. That's mostly what people use PCs for nowadays. If you're not gaming, type in papers, Excel, stuff like that, but ignore that. Maybe play a browser game if we're lucky. That's the goal. And this is what I think might get us there. This is a motherboard, a CPU, a power supply, and a stick of RAM. That's it. I'm gonna assume everybody has a monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard. And then obviously you don't need this test bench. It was just already attached to it, and I didn't want to take it off. But you could just use a cardboard box. But that's what I think the minimum equipment you need. There's no GPU. There's not even a CMOS battery now that I'm looking at it, but will it boot? I doubt it. Now, in times gone by, if you try to boot up a system with no CPU cooler, it would just smoke your uh, CPU, and then you'd have to buy a new one. But most stuff today, this is not at all a new CPU, this is a 7700K, but most stuff is thermally managed, so if, it, if you turn it on and it overheats and over temps, it's gonna down clock or shut itself off or damage itself. At least that's my hope. If not, it's gonna be a short video, but we're gonna start off by just hitting the power button and seeing what happens, and then adding as few things as possible to make this thing functional. Here we go. Where's the power button on this thing? Here it is. This is an awkward place to put the screen. I can't see anything. Are we doing anything? Oh, we are doing stuff. But we're not overheating yet. Let's see if we can get out of here. Oh, yep. CPU fan speed air. So we're gonna have to add a fan. So that is unfortunately one more thing we're gonna have to add. CPU over temperature air. Can we get into the BIOS? And to nobody's surprise, we are sitting at 89C. So that ain't gonna do it. We're gonna have to cool it somehow. But I expected that, and I have created a, a budget CPU cooler, you could say. This is, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is a, an empty pop bottle attached to, you know, a valve and a 3D printed uh, mount with a needle. We're gonna just drop water right under CPU because that is water cooling. Are you sure about that? Now, before we get too crazy here, you can see I did put some acrylic conformal coating around the uh, socket because obviously a little drip of water where it's not supposed to be is going to be a big problem. But here we go. There 
There's our first drip. That looks so wrong. Emergency paper towels at the ready. But it looks so far contained just to the CPU IHS. Hopefully cool down a little bit while we set everything up. We're 61, but I'm sure that'll not last. Or might, we might have, we might have cracked the code here. <laughs> Our water droplet is slowly growing in size. It's becoming more concerning, but as long as I can keep it away from the edge, we shouldn't have an issue. Yeah, she's still pretty hot. I don't think she's gonna be getting cold, even though our, our droplet is slowly growing in size. We're gonna have to think of something else budget-wise to solve the problem. So the water is evaporating, and it's shocking to see how hard my water is, and I have a water softener, but nonetheless, I think we need more flow, but I can't, you know, I can't make it flow any faster without it seeping over the edge, so I have another idea. First thing we'll do is clean that up a little bit. Oh wow, that's like, that might be on there for good. It's like etched in there. Anyway, what I think we're gonna try to do to increase our flow rate is I'm gonna add a little bit of a thermal paste here. And I've created this nice little cup out of aluminum foil. Most people I would assume have aluminum foil in their house. And that'll let us keep a little more water than a drop. And maybe that'll be enough. So we'll start by getting our drip system ready and make sure our cup holds water before we turn it on. Our cup's a little tall, so that's an issue. Okay, we're back to 65C, can we? Get in the windows. Uh oh. Hey. So we are looking at 74, 73. That is not actually that bad. 4.49. I mean, we're pretty much functioning. Uh, now we're at 100 package, but we're still, we're still way better off than we were. And this is getting really full. We should turn that off. That is, that is very, that's shockingly full. But. Hey, we're here. So let's see, can we go to YouTube? Oh my God, it's getting a little jumpy. It is playing, so that is, we've made it that far. I mean, it seems to be playing okay. The mouse is being a little suspect. Uh-oh, we're pegged out at 100C. We still got water in the tank. Is this still on? No. We have a lot of water, actually. Way more than I wanted. But it's keeping us alive. Is the experience good? Mm, not really. Can we play a, what is a browser game? I don't even, slithery IO? Whoa. I actually don't know how to play, oh my God, it's all mouse based? I got a scroll wheel mouse here. This actually is playing pretty, pretty good. If I can remember from the last time I played this dumb game. A little laggy. And I'm dead. There's still water in there, we're not leaking. I'm not gonna lie to you, this went a lot smoother than I thought it would in my head. I really didn't know what the play was after just dropping water on the IHS. I just wanted to see what that would do and if I could do it without smoking everything. But what we learned is that if you are stuck in a cave Iron Man style and you have a box full of old PC parts you need to throw them together to make an email to say, come get me, what you need to do minimum is get a motherboard, a CPU, a fan, a power supply, obviously a keyboard and mouse and all that stuff. And then you need to get an empty water bottle, some foil, make a cup, and you can, you can make it happen. Oh yeah, stick a RAM. So now this is obviously very impractical and you're much better off just getting like a cheap Intel cooler out of a junk drawer. You could almost get them for free online than to do this, but you know, it was fun. We're, uh, we're still, you know, clocking decently and we're not leaking, success. If you have any other ideas of weird, wacky PC ideas or just anything in general, leave them in the comments down below because I'll give it a shot. We didn't kill this PC yet, so there's still time. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll shut it off before we overplay our luck.